Today we're going to be looking at 12 more games that can run through Game Porting Toolkit on the Apple Silicon Mac. So if you didn't already know, thanks to Apple's recently released Game Porting Toolkit 2, as well as the beta release of the next version of macOS called Sequoia, we now have various fixes like the inclusion of AVX features, which now allow a ton of new games to be able to run on the Mac. So in this video, we're going to be showing you 12 of these new titles. If you want to find out how to do this yourself on your own Apple Silicon Mac, then make sure to click the link in the description for my video tutorial, which is going to show you how to get these games working as well as possible on your Apple Silicon hardware. So here we're looking at Persona 5 Royale. So this is one of those games which does require the AVX requirement, which macOS Sequoia has now patched in with Rosetta 2. Now it was actually possible to emulate the Nintendo Switch version of this game through the Ryujings emulator, but here it's great to see that the full Windows version can be played through Crossover and Game Porting Toolkit 2. During the turn-based combat, we're getting about 60 to 80 FPS on my M3 Max chip running at 1080p. And in the overworld 3D environment, we're getting about 50 to 65 FPS, which isn't too bad. Next up is NBA 2K24. So this is another game which requires AVX and can only be run on Game Porting Toolkit 2 on macOS Sequoia. So of course there is an Apple port of the arcade version of this game. However, the desktop version cannot be compared. This is nearly 150 gigabytes in storage space, whereas the Apple Arcade mobile version is basically about 11 gigabytes. So we have completely different levels of textures, graphics and assets which really allow the character animations and textures to shine, making this one of the more realistic and lifelike games that you can find now playable on Apple Silicon Max. So once again I'm not really sure what's going on with the Metal HUD, I'm not convinced that it's actually running at 200 frames per second, but you can see from the frame graphs it actually seems to run really well, barely any spikes or fluctuations despite this running through so many different translation layers on a Mac. Next up we're looking at Street Fighter 6. So here I'm actually running the demo version of the game. I actually had a lot of trouble with the full version for some reason. The full game could only run in single digits on my M3 Max chip. Now I've seen lots of reports of people online being able to play the full game at exactly the same frame rate that I'm able to play this demo at. So please make sure to leave a comment if you're able to run this full game at full speed. I'll be sure to do some testing on this game in the future on a different Mac. There's a really handy tip which is to make sure to allow the shaders to pre-compile on the menu and that pretty much eliminates all of the major stutters and performance issues they might face. Here we're running at 1080p at basically default normal settings, hitting that 60 to 80 fps mark comfortably. Next we're looking at Unity, an Assassin's Creed game that's now playable all thanks to Game 14 Toolkit 2. So I don't believe that this ever had any AVX CPU requirement, however something about the magic of Game 14 Toolkit 2 has allowed this to basically run for the first time through crossover on a Mac. Here I'm also including Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. This is actually a game that we could run on Game Porting Toolkit 1.1. Now there is an issue where the cutscenes won't render correctly, they'll just have this green screen instead. However, the rest of the game seems to run fine. It's good to see that not only can we run newer titles like Unity, Origins and Odyssey on the Mac, more and more of these games in the Assassin's Creed series are now playable on Apple Silicon hardware. So next up we're looking at Returnal. And this is a very graphically demanding Windows PC game that has the AVX CPU requirement and is now playable on the Mac. And in order for this game to boot to the menu correctly, you need to be using Crossover and you have to have patched it using CX Patcher. Also, I had some issues getting the controller to work. I had to disable Steam input and I also had to reboot a couple of times in order to actually full screen this game. But as you can see, it actually works pretty well. I'm not sure if the Metal HUD is reporting the framework correctly, but at least in this opening levels, it does feel relatively smooth smooth and playable on my M3 Max chip at 1080p running at medium setting. So I'm aware that the game does get a lot more intensive later but anyway it feels like this is a good start in terms of performance. Next up we are looking at FIFA 22. So I think that this is the latest EA football game that we can actually play. EA FC 24 won't run on the Mac due to its anti-cheat. We could actually play FIFA 22 through parallels in the past however the performance is pretty much terrible. It is far far better through game porting toolkit too. So I can't comment too much about sports games in general but I do know that a lot of people ask about these EA football games and this is basically the most up-to-date version that you can actually play on a Mac right now. It's no longer available for purchase however if you have an EA Play subscription you'll be able to go ahead and play this on your Mac through crossover and game porting toolkit too. So next up is the open world hacking game Watch Dogs Legion. So this is a game as well which could run on crossover 23.7 and game porting toolkit 1.1 however I found it a lot easier to get up and running on game porting toolkit too with better performance 
performance. Although there is a DirectX 12 option, I could only get this game running in DirectX 11. However, this is a good showcase for what Game Porting Toolkit 2 is now capable of. So next, we're looking at the game called Bodycam, the ultra-realistic multiplayer first-person shooter game played as if you're looking down the lens of someone's bodycam. Now, this is a hugely demanding game. Although it's simply an Unreal Engine 5 title, it has tons of post-processing effects and virtually no graphics options. The game is really all about this level of high fidelity that mimics real-life bodycam lenses. Now, I am playing this on the M3 Max chip, basically the most powerful Mac that you can buy right now. We're running at a paltry 20 FPS on a real-life multiplayer map, and this game can be too demanding even on very powerful PCs as well. And it's a wonder that we can get this game played at all, because it is running through so many translation layers at the same time time. Maybe one day if the developers decide to release an Apple Silicon port, it could be optimized to take advantage of Apple Silicon hardware. So the next game we're looking at is Mafia 3. So no, this is not the Windows version being run through Game Porting Toolkit 2. This is actually the Mac port. And this has been unplayable on any Apple Silicon chip, including the M1, M2, and M3. Now, historically, Mac ports have stopped working on Apple Silicon chips because they are 32-bit only. However, this is a 64-bit game. And the main reason this stopped working is because Apple Silicon chips lacked the AVX CPU architecture, which older Intel Macs used to have. However, now that macOS Sequoia integrates AVX fixes into Rosetta 2, if you want to play this game, all you need to do now is to upgrade to macOS 15, open up the Mac version of Steam, and play the Mac port of Mafia 3. So this game is definitely worth trying, especially as it's one of the only few AAA Mac games set in an open world. Next, we are looking at Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. So you might think, why am I playing the Windows version of Metro? There is a Mac port after all. However, this is the Enhanced Edition with extra content, which never made it to the Mac version. And not only that, we also have ray tracing support as well, which is only supported on Macs with M3 chips or later. And you need to be running Game Porting Toolkit too. And also the Enhanced Edition is based around its ray tracing feature. You can't even turn it off. So this is already a game which had some of the best graphics that you could find on an Apple Silicon Mac. However, if you wanted to go one step further, then you could play the enhanced version with ray tracing, which manages to work surprisingly well. It starts to make you question, what is the point of a native Mac port? If we can play the enhanced edition with ray tracing, extra content, and it still manages to have acceptable performance. Lastly, we're gonna be looking at games like Red Dead Redemption. So this is the Xbox 360 version being emulated by the emulator called Xenia, which can now be run on the Apple Silicon Mac thanks to the AVX fixes. If you wanna find out more about how to do this, I recently made a video, which I'll leave a link to in the description. There I teach you how to actually run the emulator through crossover through Game Porting Toolkit 2 and macOS Sequoia. And I also do a showcase of games that can be run through the emulator, including many Microsoft exclusives. So anyway, let me know what you thought of this list of games that can now run through Game Porting Toolkit 2. If you want to find out how to do this yourself, make sure to click on the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.